And welcome back to The Watchmen. For centuries, the belief was that Mount Sinai, the place where God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, was located in Egypt. But a new documentary suggests that the real location of Mount Sinai is not in Egypt, but Saudi Arabia. Folks, this is fascinating stuff. Take a look. Shortly after I became a Christian, I was probably 11 or 12, and I believed in God at that point, but the big problem I ran into was I didn't necessarily believe in the Bible that was historically accurate. And one of the issues was that Jewish and Christian academics and, and so-called experts out there were saying that there was very little evidence that the Exodus story ever happened, that it was a myth or greatly exaggerated, and so I had to ask myself, how could I believe in the Bible if the story of Moses and the Exodus wasn't considered true? I became really interested in this theory that the reason evidence wasn't being found was because we were looking in the wrong spot. And that theory got new steam in recent decades because there were a handful of explorers who had heard about the theory and made their way to what they believed was the real Mount Sinai in northwestern Saudi Arabia but the evidence was confiscated by the Saudis. But I continued to study it and it really tugged at my heart. And basically a miracle happened. I got this incredible chance to be one of very few outsiders to set foot in this protected area of Northwestern Saudi Arabia, where even the locals believe Moses and the Israelites came and left behind evidence. I've gone to Saudi Arabia now three times as part of the research into the Exodus story. I was so amazed at the layout of the land and how every little piece of the biblical story of the Exodus lined up, every little detail. So in order to figure out where the Exodus actually happened, you have to figure out where the Red Sea crossing miracle happened. And there's multiple candidates going across the Gulf of Aqaba from Egypt into modern day Saudi Arabia. The most interesting candidate to me is Egypt's Nueva Beach. Thanks to Google Earth and being able to look from above as we've never been able to before, this spot at Nueva Beach on the Egyptian side of the possible crossing becomes almost obvious. You need a beach where you can fit millions of people. Those millions of people, the Hebrews, have to be blocked in by canyons, by the mountains, so that Pharaoh's army could have them trapped. The only place they could escape would be through the waters. And right at this location, amazingly, there appears to be an underwater land path. So if the waters were parted, they would need somewhere to walk to. And here, just at this location, there happens to be that underwater land path. So if the waters were parted, they could walk from Egypt through the waters of the Gulf of Aqaba into northwestern Saudi Arabia, into the area that the local Saudis call the land of Jethro. By this underwater land path, going from Egypt's Nueva Beach into northwestern Saudi Arabia, there are very interesting coral anomalies that look like the remains of chariots, specifically chariot wheels. And there have been metal detectors brought down by divers that detected circular patterns of metal within the coral. Now, a lot of this would disintegrate over time, obviously, but coral can wrap itself around an object and dissolve it and retain the shape. And so divers who have gone to this area have described it as looking like an ancient junkyard, a place where potentially an army was destroyed and shattered into pieces and the coral retained the shape of those debris. New research shows that Christian, Jewish, and Islamic sources for a long time have identified the real Mount Sinai as being the highest mountain near an area of Saudi Arabia called Al-Bad today. And if you go to Al-Bad today, the highest mountain is the Jebel al-Laws mountain range, and specifically a peak named Jebel Makla, which means burned mountain. The reason it's called burned mountain is because it has a blackened top that makes it very distinct and you can see it from far away. And so that leads people to see it and question, is this evidence of God descending upon the mountain in the form of a fire like the Bible says? The locals refer to this mountain as the mountain of Moses. And they will tell you how 
Generations after generations have known that this was the real Mount Sinai. In front of this mountain, just like the Bible says, you can see a collection of rocks that have inscriptions of people worshiping bulls. And the local tradition is that this is the golden calf worship site to the point where locals will even suspect you of searching for gold if you go there. So we know from the book of Exodus that God tells Moses to set up an altar of uncut stone without steps at the foot of the mountain and next to that altar to set up 12 pillars to represent the 12 tribes of Israel. When you go to the foot of this candidate for Mount Sinai known as the mountain of Moses, you come across an ancient altar where you could see where the animals would have been lined up for sacrifice. It is made of uncut stone and it has no steps. And next to it are the remains of about 12 marble pillars. One of the biggest miracles of the Exodus story that many people would find hard to believe is the story that God told Moses to go up to a rock and strike it with his rod so that water could pour forth and his people could have water to drink from who were dying of thirst. Amazingly, along this route to the possible Mount Sinai, you come across a gigantic split rock on top of a 100 foot hill and the rock itself is between 40 and 60 feet high. When you climb it, you look like an ant next to it and down the split in the middle and the rock below, it's smooth. The adjacent areas are all rough with different types of rocks. It's very bumpy. But then in this area, it looks like water poured forth from that rock, from the split, coming down the hill onto the ground below. And the local Bedouins who have been told to keep people out and will actually confront you if you go there, will say that this is referred to by them as the split rock of Moses. At one point in my life, I thought that as human knowledge developed and as science developed, we would move further from the biblical account, that those would look more and more like myth. Uh, now I see that it's looking more and more like an accurate historical account. Thanks again to our good friend Ryan Morrow. He is doing great work. Well, coming up after the break, more incredible biblical history. We head to the Museum of the Bible in Washington, D.C. for an up-close look at rare ancient artifacts from one of history's most infamous rulers. Who was it? Find out after the break. <laughs> 